Start the recording then too. Okay, sorry. I'm... There we go. Now it's recording. Okay, this is the all hands call for November 27, 2017. And first on the agenda, it looks like we have Benchmark JS IPFS from David. Can you, can you hear me? Wait, is my connection breaking? Yep. yep. No, no, we can hear you. Okay, I just see my video really slow. That's interesting. <laughs> it's, a bit, it's a little bit choppy. Yeah, it, it should not be. The connection is supposed to be past here. All right, sorry. Uh, no more distractions. So benchmark JS at IPFS.io. So one of our contributors made a really nice website that basically um, lets users check out the speed of IPFS. If you go to benchmark-js.ipfs.io, it got published today. So you are seeing the latest version, but still not the latest version with the next JS IPFS, which is faster. Uh, you will find a website, and maybe I can just like walk you through with a screen share, makes it easier to communicate. Where is my Chrome window? Yes. Actually, Firefox, I don't use Chrome anymore. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, uh, I think that's probably. You have no loyalty. <laughs> that took like a week. Well, I was waiting for Firefox to catch up. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you get like this really nice web page. Right now, it has like three benchmarks. Uh, you can start a node, and it tells you it's using 0.26. Uh, and then once a the node starts, you'll see some peers connecting. Yeah, if I peers connected, and now you can run like one of these benchmarks. They have different files. Right now, it's like static files that yeah, it's fetching from the gateways. It gives you a Hi report. Guys. Hi, someone that I don't see his face. Okay. Uh, oh, he's here. Are you here? <laughs> How okay, are you? Awesome. Cool. I didn't know that you were joining. Sorry, I was like, sorry for interrupting. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. You want like to to um, walk us through to this benchmark platform? Uh, go ahead. It's uh, I I heard you talking. Uh, you're doing uh, very well. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I'll just like wrap it up, and then you add more of your ideas and what you want to do with this. Um, so as I was saying, you get like really this nice uh, like way of telling like how many blocks were there on the file, like how much time did it take to get each block, um, and, and you get like this read speed. Um, so uh, in a sense, like this is kind of like a, a platform for more people to add more benchmarks of streaming files or just like different kind of network situations and then compare it with like real, just like an HTTP fetch or even see it through time as it evolves and like seeing just like PFS get Faster. Uh, I was undecisive if the domain should be like is just IPFS fast yet or benchmark just uh, that IPFS at IO. Uh, but we went with this one because the certificate is already there. It was uh, simpler to set up. But yeah, we might get just an alias um, to, to point to this one as well. And so, yeah, this is pretty much it. Thank you so much for the contribution, by the way. Sorry. Thank you so much for the contribution. Um, do you oh, want to uh, thank, you, thank, you. thank you guys for uh, inviting and um, uh, I'm really glad that uh, I'm a part of uh, IPFS. I can contribute in IPFS in any way. Um, I hope, uh, yeah, I hope uh, the benchmarks uh, uh, will, be, will become more useful from, um, from you guys that you know IPFS uh, much better and you have a deep understanding of IPFS and uh, um, it, it was th this example was just um, a get a stream benchmarking uh, performance uh, uh, monitoring but I think we can uh, improve it to become really useful uh, you know set of tools for uh, um, keeping track of what's going on uh, in terms of speed and uh, uh, what's going on in the background. Yeah. So I, I guess like you are uh, jumping into the next point in the agenda, if I recall correctly, which is like more benchmarks. Um, yep. So we created an issue here, just like, uh, again, like this issue was created today. We kind of like published this today. Uh, although 
um, this was all done like some weeks ago, the, 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 the core of the work. And so the issue is about like getting feedback on like what will people want to see on this website? Uh, is it like having more files to be added? Is there like any kind of visualization that would help everyone to understand what is going on? Um, uh, one that I have in mind is just like having like a big square, like I think transmission does this, which like you have a big square with all the tiny blocks and like as, as the blocks are coming, or they are being piped to your nodes, you see the blocks appearing on this big square, and then finally you have the whole piece. Uh, so we, we can do more visualizations, we can add more tests, uh, we can compare it, we can benchmark it against HTTP and, and see the differences, right? Because like when it's like a small file, probably HTTP is going to be faster because it's like a small file comes from a single endpoint. You don't have to do any crypto magic, it's just like, downloaded but then when we have like a large file like a two gig file ipfs is certainly going to be faster and and, and having those comparisons is going to be useful and and uh, that's it i think i can stop my screen share here uh, mm -hmm. any questions ideas um anything to share george also uh, can you say something else well, um, yeah, um, we can, uh, uh, I, I don't know uh, much about, uh, you know, what's uh, going, uh, going on in, uh, with IPFS connections with peers, you know. Uh, this feature that you mentioned was really good to keep track of uh, uh, what chunks are you getting from whom. Uh, it's, it's a really good feature, I think. Um, uh, also, and, and also we can, you know, we can start with uh, some uh, basic stuff that basic uh, metrics that uh, uh, for those who use IPFS would be really useful and we, we can start writing them down and uh, implementing and uh, yeah, I think um, in the process uh, many things will come up and, and uh, yeah. Uh, make it more um, a useful too because I, I wasn't expecting to be sad, uh, so much useful in the beginning. I just created it just to show the speed, but um, yeah, we can improve it. All right. Um, I have. Um, three. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, I in, in the discussion in the issue, um, I mentioned also Victor's uh, some of the some of Victor's comments uh, on some ideas he had um, about running multiple tests for each uh, uh, get um, to you know to to. to keep the medians, uh, to have a much better understanding with multiple tests. And uh, the functionality of pinning and pinning files, uh, which I think it's a good um, idea where you can also have, uh, you know, a list of your files locally and then, you know, try to play around and see how the speed goes. And also, um, yeah, um, having it, uh, uh, Sorry for my English, guys. I, I think I'm torturing you, but <laughs> um, we can also have um, a, a better understanding of this browser class, which, uh, which, which is a mystery. Uh, because, you know, I, I, I was uh, trying to debug it and trying to, you know, see what's going on, but I could never, I was never sure of what's going on. Uh, uh, in the background. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, maybe if we run tests multiple times, uh, this, this issue uh, or this bug uh, might come up uh, more often and we have a better understanding. I don't know. I haven't uh, uh, seen the process. I, I haven't seen the relative issues uh, if it's totally solved, but I have experienced recently also some browser crashing issues. So we can, um, yeah, we can get, I don't know, we can investigate it uh, in more detail, I guess. And also, generally, we can, uh, we can make it like, look like more a dashboard 
uh, page and then add uh, more and more, uh, you know, benchmarks for getting files, benchmarks for puts, for adding files, and th this kind of, uh, you know, approach. Any ideas are welcome uh, also from you that uh, you have, uh, uh, you know, uh, creating a benchmark, benchmarks from, it could be really useful only from those who really use it, you know, and uh, I want to have the numbers that have a meaning, make sense. Uh, so that way, if we write down the specifications, um, and it's it's more targeted. Um, I I think it would be more useful. Okay, I don't want to hijack the conversation. Uh, it's it's good. Yeah, let let's continue uh, on the issue. There, there's a lot of ideas and like things that we can we can use the benchmark to identify problems. We can use the benchmark just like to see improvements in performance and memory usage. And yes, I agree, totally agree with the dashboard because if we have a dashboard that makes those tests very repeatable and very, very fast, then like it empowers everyone to actually participate on that debugging and figuring things out with us. Yes, exactly. All right, if we're ready to go into the next agenda item, it looks like we have lib peer to peer transport from David. All right. By the way, if you want to mix up like a shuffle the agenda items, just go for it. <laughs> okay. Yes. I might I might just like click enter and so like it's like David, David, David. <laughs> like there is more people that want to talk. So okay, I'll just do this one. Um, new peer to peer transport. Uh, there was a work in progress of a web socket start transport, and I thought it would be good to mention that now it's ready for prime time. You can use it. Uh, in fact, the next version of JSFPFS uh, will have it installed by default, and then you can just uh, activate it with a multi other. Um, it, it should be as simple as enabling any enabling any other transport. This WebSocket star is very similar to WebRTC star. So you got a, a rendezvous point where you dial to and then you use this rendezvous point for discovery. So like any node that dials to that point will also get to know that you dial to that endpoint. So it's kind of like a, a multicast DNS of the browser. Uh, and the difference between WebRTC star and WebSocket star is that WebSocket star uses a WebSocket endpoint to relay the messages. Uh, while WebRTC just uses that endpoint to relay the signaling data that then lets you establish a peer-to-peer -peer channel. Um, there, there are a couple of reasons why this transport was built. Like the major one is really because WebRTC is very memory hungry uh, and it's really hard to control. And so there are things that we know that we can do, but this was kind of like a, a short thing, like a quick thing that we could build in order for people to have the same experience that they have with the WebRTC star without having to wait uh, more weeks or even a couple of months to, to see a full round solution that knows how to control the beasts that WebRTC is. Um, in essence, WebSocket star, it's kind of like circuit relay. Uh, it's very similar. Like it's almost like a, a different color of the same thing uh, uh, or the same functionality but implemented in a different way because circuit relay enables you to use any IPFS node to relay your connection to another peer. Um, and like you have to have the multi other of that peer as a circuit relay multi other with WebSocket star, you are still relaying the connection, but it, it is a transport. So like in the design of we peer to peer, the design was uh, purposefully uh, made to support that like a transport or any other piece of the, the stack can be like a set of modules itself. And so Relay is a transport that knows how to use Swarm and Streammuxing and Sekayo to create another transport. In case of WebSocket Star, it's something more low level, more simple, that just uses a WebSocket endpoint to route connections. Um, I guess in practical terms, what this means is like it's a transport that doesn't do the crashing thing that people have seen. Um, we have detected some bugs on it today. Like it's not very reliable on closing peer connections, so you can dial, you can, you can discover, but if you go off and on a lot of times, 
the rendezvous point gets a little bit confused, so it needs more tests there. Mm -hmm. um, and and yeah, and uh, also because I saw a conversation on the IRC channel about confusion, like is this the route that we want to go? Do we want to create like these rendezvous points for our transports? And the answer is no. This is like a short-term solution. Uh, what we are going to do next is re-architecture the way that module loading works on the peer-to-peer, -peer, so that we can have like this common spine, this like common vertical inside the peer-to-peer -peer that enables any piece to use all the other pieces simply. Right now, it's not trivial trivial because of the way that dependencies are required and injected. Um, but like once that re-architecture is there, then a transport will be very able to call something from an upper layer and and so that means that like instead of having one single rendezvous point then any node in the network can become a rendezvous point for any other nodes to meet um again very much like circuit relay uh just different colors of the same thing of the same product um and, and then we'll remove those central points which yes we we don't want them we don't need them it's just like a question of re-architecturing things so that's it works nicely and the interfaces are still respected and so on. Um, yeah, I, I hope this explanation was useful. Maybe not everyone has the full context of all these things. So feel free to ask me questions now or later or ask me for pointers. Uh, or, yeah. Tipi, could you, uh, maybe after we've discussed, can you make sure to update the notes to have links to like what is WebSocket star and what is WebRTC star and That's good. like where can people read more about those and what and also like related pull requests or issues in the IPFS yeah, or the P2P space. Absolutely. All right, if we're ready to proceed on to the next agenda item. Um, just pick one. It looks like IPFS Barcelona take two from Victor. Yeah, this is just a quick note. I put the link in the uh, in the notes as well, right after. It's planned to be the, the 16th of December. It will be kind of the same format. Uh, hopefully the hack time will be a bit better. But if you are close by to Barcelona and you want to come, that will be very fun. Or if you want to participate or help out remotely, that will be super nice as well. All right. Uh, it looks like also above that one, uh, this week, JS IPFS 2.7 was released. And there's an issue for that there. Um, All right. Uh, just a quick update. So the um, release is ready. Uh, finally, uh, we did everything that we wanted to do. And the notes on what is coming with that release are on that issue. And now that we discovered that issues with WebSocket Star, we're going to fix them. But the release should be published in two days, so Wednesday. Uh, if you are a user of JSAPFS, uh, please do test this latest uh, version and let us know if it works for you, if you find any problem with your application, with your tests. Um, it is always like very productive to see other people run their test suites against the latest because it just gives us like so many, like sometimes it's just a level of, like a degree of confidence that we know, okay, like, things are working and that's great. <laughs> uh, other times it's actually they find bugs and that's also great because then we can fix them before breaking people's software. And, and yeah, that's it. Okay, um, off of that, it looks like, David, if you don't mind continuing, the, the web UI and station are getting lots of love. I'll do it. Um, so this is kind of like, and Enrique Diaz um, is a new contributor to the whole project. Uh, he started like two weeks ago, just like going through issues and, and submitting pull requests. And over this time, he managed to uh, get Web UI to work again, like to pass on CI and to actually be buildable, which is something that didn't happen for quite some time. Like uh, we need to update the Web UI on GoIPFS because like, the HTTP API of uh, GoIPFS has been evolving, just IPFS API has been evolving, but the web UI was never really updated, so it's kind of like behind. If you are using web UI today, you probably have some problems. So um, now the web UI is already fixed, updated, it builds, we can get a new hash for that app and like update that hash that is art coded on GoIPFS. 
um, and so that users can use the web UI. Uh, the other thing that uh, Enrique also contributed, and Aki is probably going to join us next week with a demo. I, I'm just like sharing it, right? Um, so yeah, see station. So station works again. Uh, and it's all updated, so you can now, uh, I, and I will also add links to both of these things. Uh, don't worry if you are not finding them now. But Station is an Electron app that installs as like a menu bar item, and it's an IPFS node that you can drag and drop files, and like then it copies to your clipboard the IPFS and IO slash IPFS slash ash of that file, so you can uh, just share with friends, and, and you can like turn on and off your node. It's kind of like a nice way to, install an IPFS node without having to do terminal, command line things, and, and just like a nice utility. Um, there are some big ideas of like how that thing should look like and how it should work and which features it can have. So if you also have ideas, go to those repos and add issues with ideas. Uh, and, and hopefully in the next couple of weeks slash next quarter to actually get something delivered the idea is to walk to uh, to go towards a scenario where we have the the name might change but like the ipfs dashboard which is like a full page like the web ui but like with more features because ipfs has evolved a lot since web ui was designed and then you have the ipfs um ui for like menu bars or for um Firefox and Chrome extensions. So like when you install the, the IPFS companion, you get like a, a tiny UI box. When you install the Electron app, you get a tiny UI box. And like if we can modularize those UI uh, pages to web components, then we can reuse them across different integrations to the Electron, to with the desktop, to the browser one with the IPFS companion, to web UI, which is a larger dashboard. And also because there will be web components, we can enable and disable them depending on the feature that the user wants to use, the features that the IPFS implementation has that they are using with, and also uh, enabling the user to say, I want to use an MBAB node with just IPFS, or I want to use a remote node with the IPFS. So yeah, there's a lot of like really great ideas in terms of like getting users into IPFS and like start playing with it. Uh, a lot of it will be around these repos, like IPFS Companion, Web UI, and Station. Uh, so stay tuned. And also, if you are interested in contributing, just let a note in the notes of this session or in the repos. All right. It looks like we have uh, the critical issues for Go IPFS and JS IPFS. So I threw that in there just, just to surface um, that we have these lists that during this quarter, uh, sort of behind the scenes, the Go IPFS team and JS IPFS team have been putting in a lot of work into addressing known critical issues. And there's nobody, well, Hector's the closest thing to the Go IPFS team today, and Dimitri, I guess, but um, Jeremy's on a, on a plane, and I think Kuba's, um, in a in class right now, but we could at least look at the Go IPFS ones, um, and just that some of them have been addressed already. So connection closing, which was um, a long-standing challenge, uh, also swarm hot paths optimized. I'm not sure what that one is. We don't have Steven here. I'm fixing some flood sub stuff. So you can check in with that list. I would say next. Well, I won't be here next week, but maybe on next week's call, some of the Go committers can look through this list and give an update um, of how the progress is going on those ones. And then, unless anything jumps out at anyone about the Go stuff, we could just look at the JS ones. Okay, David, do you wanna give a quick glance at the, the JS ones you've been hammering through? Yeah, absolutely. So I'll just share my screen again. Hmm. All right, so I used the waffle board to track all of the issues that we prioritized for this quarter. And by the way, I don't know what happened to Zoom, but the window with everyone's face just disappeared. So I have literally no feedback. If someone raises a hand, please tell me. Um, okay, so <laughs> you have here the, the waffle board. It's already filtered by P0 critical. Um, and we can see that there has been a lot of progress. We started with 51 issues on the ready column. And right now we have 17 left and five in progress. 
the um, like a lot of performance issues have been solved in just APFS and like bugs that were just annoying that were there. Uh, the next two really big items that still need to get some attention are the IPLD track. So there was a lot of um, developments or a lot of improvements proposed by the end of last quarter. Uh, and like there has been code, um, there was code created to fill the needs that some users were reporting, but we never got the chance to actually just push those changes through the, the, entire, the entirety of the IPLD stack. So that's the work here. You see support the API and, and IPLD resolver. So it's not, like this is a bug and then the IPLD resolver changes. Uh, also attached to this one, one of the issues that was critical for JS IPFS is getting the DAG API um, supported on JS IPFS API, so the client that typically people use with um, Go IPFS. This work depends in a lot of work that needs to happen on Go IPFS land, and, and, and yeah, we, we essentially need to revisit this and like see if the the design that we decided on and like the ways that we decided to approach these are still valid and if there is something that we can still do this quarter. Um, so the other big piece is really the DHT work. Uh, so uh, we, in JSIPFS land, we have a DHT implementation, but it's not interoperable with Go yet, uh, although it works in JS land. And yeah, like in, it needs more debugging. Uh, a lot of the pieces are there, but um, there is something, some message that is not passing, and it seems more like a leap to peer problem than necessarily a JSIPFS problem, but it affects uh, how JSIPFS works and the experience that users get. So for the remaining of the quarter, again, just to, um, to emphasize, it will be things around like PLD and then DHT by that order. Exciting. Uh, was, was this useful? Uh, any yeah. questions? <laughs> awesome. <laughs> uh, yeah, if there are any questions on like what these issues mean, I, I'm sure like I look at these issues and like I know what is written on the whole thread. So I, I, I'm seeing it. But like if you have a question on the status of something, like if you want to ask now. Uh, yeah, go ahead, Johnny. So um, talking to Stephen, I, I think uh, there is this possibility of resolving IPLD uh, using uh, the gateway. Um, is that still a, a possibility, or is it going to be really through uh, the API DAG get? You mean by having a slash IPLD slash CID instead of like just doing IPFS? Yeah, yeah, we definitely talked a lot about that, or at least in multiple occasions. And like, no one is against it. Um, it is. It is more a question of would that be useful today? Like, would people actually need that API? And so far, the answer has been no. Uh, and maybe you are going to tell us that we are wrong because you have some, some perhaps a use case for it. Uh, the reality is that, like, most people that use the gateway want to access files. They are not interested in like single nodes of the graph. And, and like, when people want to operate over graphs, they really want an API, like something that they can create a program and create a graph and traverse through it, and like do filtering and selection and transformations and so on. So, so if there is a case uh, that you want to share, go for it. Uh, not really. So actually, my IPID specification, the DID spec on top of IPFS, I, I built it using IPLD now. And so I think, um, so I'm mostly using the API, which is a little bit in flux right now. So I think it's, it, it doesn't really matter. I'm building it on top of the API. Um, but I think ultimately it's going to be for other people to resolve for like uh, the Sovereign Foundation uh, to be able to just hit the gate gateway to resolve the the. The, the, the object. And so I think uh, mostly for convenience for other mm -hmm. users, not myself. I see. Uh, okay. So we. I guess the issue really is about resolving. Um, you can get the JSON document, but the JSON document has to be serialized in CBOR and you have to validate the hash of the content, I guess is really the issue. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Make sure it's deterministic. Uh, it is really hard to give like um, 
standalone HTTP interface. So like without any client in the front for IPLV. So we can totally like show you data. We, we can patch a node and like give you a JSON version of the data. But as soon as it has like data types um, that are like buffers or like different kinds of numbers, because the way that JSON gets stringified and put in the wire, it kind of like messes with that data, which means that like you might be grabbing some piece of JSON from like IPFS.io slash IPLD slash some CID, and then you grab that piece of JSON and then you serialize it again and like do the CID, and it's not going to match the same CID that you were patching initially. Um, so this is kind of like a really hard problem. The, the solution for this would be just like creating maybe like instead of you getting the raw node, getting you a visualizer. So like when people load something on slash IPLD, they actually load something like a, a playground. If you have visited like that at seaboard.io playground or JSON LD playground, you get like this box that tells you the data that's inside and the, the serialized version. So that if you grab the serialized version, then you can reproduce the same content locally using IPFS or just IPFS or in the future by IPFS and so on. Um, but yeah, like I guess we just need to understand what are the needs and like what is the best thing that we can put on that path for, to make it useful for users. Okay, cool. Yeah, I, I think we'll just submit it as an issue. I think uh, not high priority. Um, yeah, but like if there is any endpoint that you need in order to get the IDs moving forward, just also, yeah, what, let's figure it out. Yeah, so mostly I've been able to do it right through. I, I was writing it um, into IPFS, the library, but actually realized that just using the, the API is just fine. I guess there was the interface Go, interface Go API, and so I'm basically building on top of that. And so key store and everything else works just fine. So I'm building it basically, and it's uh, the DID spec is, is basically uh, modeling of JSON. It's pretty straightforward. Sounds good. Okay. All right. It looks like uh, next we have a pull request on JS IPFSD control requesting some feedback. Hey. Uh, yeah, that's fine. Uh, okay. Dimitri here. Um, just uh, we're, uh, there, there has been some talks about um, having a consistent module to start and stop uh, uh, IPFS nodes. And that's basically a proposal for that and trying to get some feedback because that is a blocker for getting the required amount of testing on, on circuit uh, really to get it ready for prime time. So that's kind of um, uh, an important piece of that as well. So yeah, just some feedback on, on the proposed interface. If there's something that, that um, you know, requires comments or criticism, uh, leave it there. But I am at this point kind of trying to time box it for the next 24 hours. And if you know, there's no objections that I move forward with what I proposed. But if there are, uh, let's uh, let's make sure we bring them up. Yep, that's pretty much it. Uh, go All ahead, right. David. I see the, the, the right uh, raised hand. Yeah, so um, so me and Dimitri have been talking about this. Essentially, just to give everyone a little bit more context, is IPFS D-CTL, uh, we call it the daemon controller, and it is the module that typically people use from JSLAN to spawn Go IPFS daemons. And because now there is the need to also spawn uh, Jet IPFS daemons to do all of the internal testing, uh, we kind of like figure out that we better to just create a module that is more flexible, more versatile than creating a different module. And the daemon controller module, it's kind of like old in terms of interface, like it doesn't support a lot of things and it's also like not very well documented. And, and so because we learn some of the UX that developers expect, 
by building what we call the IPFS factory. It's a thing that we have for testing on Jessup Pacifica and Jessup FS. We figured that like, okay, let's just like bring all that innovation back to this module and make it available for the entire community. And like then we have a single place to spawn nodes if it's from, from Electron, from the browser, from like a single JavaScript file, et cetera. And those no demons can be Jessup FS, can be Go, or in the future, any other implementation. Uh, so the question in the ask here is if you use it to spawn demons for your code, and like I know other applications use it, um, definitely make sure to check that pull request because it has a new proposal for its API, which should be simpler, should be nicer, should be more uh, debuggable. And if there is something that like you created on top of the old API that you see that we are missing and you think it would be better to also add, definitely bring it up. Or if you see that we are removing something, which should not be the case, but if we see that we are removing something that will break your usage of it, also let us know. Um, and that, that, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, like, again, uh, we have the PR open. It will get a little bit, like some days to get developed, so you still have some time. Uh, and, and if we have to add something in the future, we can always add more, it's fine. Yep, absolutely. Thanks, David. No problem. Thank you for pushing that. All right. If we are ready to move on, then looks like we have a demo on the current state of Jenkins from Victor. Yes. Hello. So everyone can can hear me good. Yep. Perfect. Okay. I am gonna share my browser, which happens to be Firefox. It's always been Firefox. I'm not a traitor. Um, so let's see. We have this. Uh, long running, now everything is red here, but don't worry, it's my favorite. Uh, so this is how Jenkins looks right now. The, it's called Blue Ocean, it has like a new UI and things. So what I, my, my biggest focus this quarter have been working on Jenkins and trying to make our CI as good as possible. That also involves making sure Travis and Circle CI and App layer works well as well. So the, the current state is that we now have we now have a repository that I have under here where we keep shared shared pipelines for all JavaScript jobs so far. Um, so what it does basically we have a, a couple of Node.js versions we want to run. We have the OSS. We want to test some other globals for the John version. And then we have specific sets for Windows because Windows is a bit special. And then we have the sets for, for Unix compatible machines. And then basically we run through all of those in parallel. So how this would look in the actual job, it would look something like this. So this is speedy stream of Maxer, for example. Um, we can see that it took 35 minutes last time we run this, which is kind of like too long time. So I'm gonna go over to one of the Go IPFS jobs as well. We can see the Golang pipeline looks, looks like this. It's a bit, bit worse because I just hacked it together yesterday basically, but the same principle. We have a bunch of OSS, uh, a Golang version, and then we run through installing DX, DX Go, checking out the code, installing dependencies, rewriting, and then testing. Um, and then how this would look, this is for example, Go IPFS address. It's a lot faster, it takes like two minutes. Uh, so we can hopefully, if the demo gods are on my side, we can replay this. And we should see it testing on all the OSs in the same time, so we don't have to wait. So the Linux version completed in 30 seconds, more or less. And OS X version is a bit, bit slower, and so is the, the Windows version as well. Um, so how this would actually affect you on, on GitHub, we can look at in the time. So we have Go IPFS address, which is the, the first one I, I started with. Uh, I didn't create a pull request here. 
but we have a branch and here we can see the the status the typical github status uh, job right now this library only has one one ci many projects have have multiple ones so a better example would be uh, maybe one of the multi-formats ones so the the current state is that all the JavaScript projects in multi-format and IPLD, I think, has been done already and is using using Jenkins. Um, so for a JavaScript project, you have the app layer, the circle, and a dot Travis file. And then we also put the Jenkins file in the CI folder. And then you just call this this function and it all works. Um, so let's see if I can find the pull request that I made for this. So now every time you make a pull request, you get four different services. Oh, you know, I cannot see the old photos. Oh yeah, here. So here we have Circle CR, we have AppLayer, Jenkins, and Travis for all the JavaScript projects. And then for Go, I think it's Travis, Circle, and now I'm adding Jenkins as well. So here is a Go flood sub, which I just added now as well. Just using Travis and Jenkins, um, and yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Uh, the workers are run on Amazon and in a private macOS cloud as well. So the AWS workers we can spin up whenever we want when we need more when we need more workers, and then the the Mac workers require a bit more work up so currently we have one one Linux worker we have two windows and two Mac OS because the Linux worker is, is so much faster than the other one so we only need one at this point and yeah so now the next step is to just add this Jenkins file in basically every single repo that we have and then after that we can hopefully turn off the other CI services and everything will run much faster and that's my that's my update. Anyone have any any questions? So you'll be done like tomorrow because there's not that many repos to add Jenkins files to. Yeah, right? well, actually, it would just take like ten minutes or something like that. I think I only have three hundred repos left, more or less. Uh, but I I actually wrote a tool uh, at least for the JS project to sync the files automatically. I still have to manually check everything is passing, and I found some minor bugs in the pipeline as well. So it's been good. The Go project, I am not sure. Who is it? Cool. This is great. Yeah, this is really, really cool. Like, I've wasted so many hours waiting for comments. <laughs> <laughs> because you can always like try to do something else, but then you also have to check in with Travis if it has finished or not. Yeah, uh, and then it fails, and then you have to retry. <laughs> and I've I've forgotten. Are we planning to turn off Travis and Circle once we've got Jenkins running, so those won't even get run? Yeah, that's the plan. Cool. And then we can. Uh, the plan is also to add more architectures like ARM. Uh, to add different workers that are faster or slower and we can have different network conditions as well We have we have a lot more possibilities of setting up the test to run in the exact environment that we want to rather than some hosted thing where they decide how we should run our test Sweet um, one quick question, um, when or is it part of the plan for this quarter to get the GSIPFS API tests running against GoIPFS all the time so that when there is a change in GoIPFS, the GoIPFS team knows? Um, the the JSIPFS API test, correct? Yeah, so there was one time that there was like a Mac OS machine running uh, with Team City yeah. that was using GSIPFS API tests to, to test with Go IPFS, like the master, uh, but that that went away. And so since that went away, we already found a bunch of problems that like Go IPFS just changed a couple of things and then we had to catch up. 
Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, is that coming back soon? Yeah, for sure. I I focused firstly on writing a generic pipeline for the standard uh, for the standard jobs, the ones that are similar that can have the most impact in the shortest amount of time. Uh, but now I can focus on having the custom pipelines as well, which Go IPFS also needs uh, for itself. Probably needs a custom pipeline, not a generic one. And then it will be easier to add the JS IPFS API dependency. Well, the other way around, add Go IPFS uh, builds as a dependency for JS IPFS API and then run with that. So yes, short answer. Sweet. All right, well then that looks like we are at the end of the agenda. Um, yeah, and this concludes the uh, all hands meeting for November 27, 2017.